Hey, howdy, hi, hello, boys and girls. It's Andy, and welcome to another episode of King's Comics. Now, with the recent news that famous writer Brian K. Vaughn is writing a live-action Gundam movie, and as you can see from my collectibles over here, I freaking love Gundam or giant robots, and I also really enjoyed Brian K. Vaughn. But who is he? What has he created? And actually, he's done a lot for the industry. In fact, he even wrote for the TV show Lost. For those who have kept up with the MCU TV shows, he also wrote The Runaways. He created the characters as well as wrote some of the episodes for the Hulu series. That being said, I have a lot of thoughts on Brian K. Vaughn and his works, but uh, let's go ahead and just name my top five Brian K. Vaughn works. But first, some honorable mentions. Not quite making my cut are two works I do still enjoy, but once again won't be in my top five today. The Private Eye as well as Doctor Strange, The Oak, which is a Doctor Strange book I recommend everyone read. The Private Eye is one of his indie titles that first came out as a webcomic about a future where everybody's stored information on the internet just leaks out and there's very little privacy and sense of anonymity. And then Doctor Strange, The Oath is a case where Wong has actually fallen ill terminally. So Doctor Strange then pursues the panacea, which is a cure-all, but has to face the decision of whether he will use it to save many or whether he'll use it just to save Wong. Once again, these are two works that I love, but let's, let's go ahead and cut right into my top five. Coming in at number five is The Hood, written for Marvel Max. For those of you who may know, Marvel Max was this kind of edgy line of comics that Marvel came out with in order to appeal to mature audiences. Now, The Hood was a character created by Brian K. Vaughn that was this petty criminal, Parker Robbins, who kills a demon and then steals this demon's hood and boots, therefore gaining the ability to become invisible, to become invulnerable, as well as to levitate. It's a very interesting creation of a character, and we actually see his character reappear in the Marvel Universe, especially after Civil War and just grow more powerful over time. I really like the character and that's why I'm ranking it number five. But we gotta keep going with this list and move on to number four. Ex Machina, written for Wild Storm Comics. Brian K. Vaughn wrote a work where the hero of the story, Mitchell Hundred, becomes the mayor of New York after having a tenure as a superhero known as the Great Machine. He has the ability to talk to machines as well as helps prevent the events of 9-11 or at least reduce the scope of the damage of 9-11, which spurs him on to become politically inclined as he becomes mayor of New York City. It has a lot of deconstruction work about the nature of what it means to be a hero, as well as active engaging heroism versus just political heroism or passive heroism. But once again, let's keep it going as I move towards number three, Pride of Baghdad, written for Vertigo Comics. Once again, it turns out that in 2003, during a bit of the Middle Eastern American turmoil, some lions got loose from a zoo in Baghdad. Now, this is interesting because Brian K. Vaughn picked this particular event in order to voice some political perspectives as well as the more human elements of the conflict through these lions who had escaped. He's able to voice these different points of views and conscious narratives on what is going on during this turmoil as well as these conflicts going on in the Middle East. You know, I thought it was very interesting and just very human and surreal considering that he voices these tones through animals, lions, of all things. Now, though, we gotta move on to number two, Saga for Image Comics. For those who have heard me talk about it, Image Comics is this indie label that was actually started by Todd McFarlane. We can go into more of that later. But I say this because it, the series, Saga, blew up almost out of nowhere. It's about these two star-crossed lovers from different worlds who end up having a child together, and because of this child's mixed genealogy, they eventually have to go on the run in order to protect their familial unit. Along the way, they meet dragons, spider ladies, uh, bounty hunters with bones to pick, oh yeah, and robots with TVs for heads. It's a very interesting series, and it's still ongoing, so I encourage anyone to pick it up who is... <clears throat> 18 or older. Once again, I think pretty much every series I've mentioned on this list is pretty mature. Probably should have led with that. But it's still not my number one because coming in at number one is Why the Last Man? Huh. I'm, I guess I'm leaning kind of towards Vertigo comics today. Why the Last Man was also written for Vertigo. And it tells the story of, well, as the title might imply, The Last Man on Earth. After a mysterious event wipes out all of mankind, well, I guess male kind, only women are left on Earth except for one Yorick Brown, named after poor Yorick of Hamlet. Now, he then has to go on a quest to find his 
girlfriend, who was stuck in Australia at the time, and his sister. It's a social narrative, but more so discussed than the nature of male and female relationships. It's a very well written story. It's concluded its run. I have all five uh, volumes of it, or I guess collections of it, as some of you may have seen in my collection videos, and I cannot recommend this series enough, especially for those who like stories with a message, not just a lot of action going on, because there is action going on. But that is all, folks. Those are my top five Brian K. Vaughn graphic novels, and I highly recommend everything that I've listed, especially, once again, Why the Last Man, considering that it's done. But if you are a Marvel fanboy, I mean, definitely check out Doctor Strange, The Oath, or The Hood. But guys, once again, thank you so much for tuning in and joining me. If you want to hear me talk more about Brian K. Vaughn or any of the works he's discussed, heck, I've, I'd love to hear from you back in the comments down below. Or you can check out the bibliography, his bibliography. I've linked it in my details. And as always, if you have any comments, feedback, suggestions, tell me down below or start a conversation with me via social media. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Or if you'd like to know a little bit more about this author or any of the comics I mentioned in today's video. But thank you guys for tuning in so much. And uh, if you liked what you saw today, please hit that like button. If you really liked what you saw today, then hit the notification or subscribe button. I would not mind at all. And please feel free to share this out to your friends and family, y'all. Get them included in on all the fun. And thanks once again for tuning in to another episode of King's Comics, y'all. I will be seeing you real soon.